Yo, what's up guys? So today I want to show you the fastest way to level with crossbow and dagger. And in this guide we will actually go over the specifics for crossbow dagger, not the general leveling process. If you still want to know more about this and get to know the strategies and how to do stuff really quick and efficient, then you should check out the video here. I have it also linked in the description below. I do want to start with going over the skills and then afterwards we are going over the stats and the items. I think this way it's easier to understand why we are choosing like a certain thing. When we are looking at the skills themselves, our main damage source is going the skill quickfire. What is making that skill so good is the low cooldown of only 6 seconds and when we are weakening an enemy we are getting increased damage and we have two really reliable sources to weaken enemies so we basically have that benefit almost whenever we are using quick fire the next thing is that um, if we are able to get that skill to epic we are getting 10 percent cooldown reduction every time we are landing a critical hit that thing is shooting three times but with offhand proc chance in theory we could hit six times if we're having 100% crit rate, we are getting 60% cooldown reduction while we are using quick fire, which makes that almost spammable. So it's really important that we are getting quick fire to epic as fast as possible, and we are trying to get a high critical hit rate. Another thing that you might run into with at the early game is mana issues. That you do not have enough mana rec, you cannot use all your skills, which will result in really bad damage per second. And to solve that issue early on, we are having Assassin Step. So um, here, if we are getting that to rare as fast as possible, we are having um, mana rec for the whole duration. So for 6 seconds we are having mana rec after we are killing a target. And you can imagine when we are going 1v1 versus um, monsters, we can have that up running almost the whole time. If you are still having mana issues, I would highly recommend using mana exchange right here where you can convert health into mana, then just pop a health potion afterwards, which are really easy accessible. And this way you can maintain your mana, like I would say almost unlimited. It's better if you don't have to use it, and then you can solve it other ways but um, it's also perfectly fine if it ends up in your PvE build. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. In the last video, I told you that 98.9% .9 of the viewers are not subscribed to the channel, and you actually have been slapping it, and now it's only 91.2%, and I know you can do even more, so hit that subscribe button. And as a little goodie, on the 18th, together with the global beta, I will release a 27-video walkthrough guide to take you to all the hard quests and all the hard puzzles so you are not getting frustrated. Alongside the quick fire, what is making it really strong is the um, the self buff of inject venom, which we know that quick fire can hit up to six times in a really short amount of time. So we are able to stack the poison a lot. And if you are playing the um, Xbow dagger, you do not have to kill the monsters all the way to the end. Always let the poison finish. So as soon as you see you have enough poison to continue to the next mob, don't waste your time anymore. I see so many players while they are leveling, like really finishing the mobs off, even if they have poison stacks. I don't know why, just don't do it. When we are looking more in the, um, in the mid game, starting to get closer and closer to your epic uh, quick fire. And while you're doing this, you will take a look at the passives that are giving increased critical hit rate. So for example, Assassin's Instinct is like a key one where you can get critical... Um, Vicious Fangs will give you critical hit, because basically with your Inject Venom they will always be poisoned. So you will get a fairly high crit rate going with this build and you can make total use of the quick fire. We will go over the specific rotation that it needs to, um, to deal that high damage later. Like let's go now for the skills right here to understand the certain stats that we have as an option. The first one that you want to get to 30 to get additional bonus is perception. Because once you're getting that to 30 you will get an additional 100 hit and you will need this hit 
to not miss the monsters. So this is essential. Then after you have perception to 30, you will have to decide to either go wisdom or dexterity. Dexterity could on first glance look like, oh yeah, it's getting you more damage, but wisdom is giving you more mana rack and at 30 additional 750 MP. If you are going dexterity and you're realizing, oh fuck, I am running into mana issues, it's not working, reset and go into wisdom. If this is still not enough, you can also go for crafting accessories that have mana region on or use traits with mana rack. It is important that you fix your mana first. Don't get like taken away by like a higher damage number or something like this. It's way better to have consistent damage than like one high peak and then not being able to do any DP. When we are looking at um, items in general, always make sure that you're not mindlessly upgrading a lower tier item in a higher tier item. So that means if we are, for example, here having a green ring, and we want to upgrade that green ring for a blue one. Then the blue one should have at least some growth stones ready so you can upgrade that. And it should have some traits ready, especially when your old ring is already fully traded. I'm telling you, getting traits on green items, especially in when you're like a short time, like for example in the open beta, it will be worth, but also on release it will be worth. Plus six green item with traits will be way better than a clean blue item. And Trading green items is really easy and fairly cheap. So don't miss out on that boost of um, damage that you can get here. If you are following this, you will maintain your power spike, the whole leveling process, and it will never feel like, oh shit, I'm getting weak. I have to get something like to, like to feel strong again. You will have a really nice leveling curve. Another thing that's important for the, uh, for the items is that you focus on your crossbow first. So all the rewards that you're getting from quests will be weapon growth stones that what you're choosing until your main weapon is plus nine the crossbow i would even go so far that you're choosing it until the elite resistance knife is also at plus nine and then you start choosing accessory growth stones to get your lethal ring to plus nine and then you start choosing armor growth stones if you have the option of course the all the items that you're getting alongside that we can choose just keep upgrading. We are looking at the build. One of the downsides of crossbow dagger is that it is fairly squishy. And we want to counteract that so we are not dependent on like a group and leveling. We can do like most of the stuff solo by adding health, ranged evasion, range endurance and melee evasion onto our gear traits where it is possible. So um, like for example here the leather boots. No? We have health, range evasion, range endurance and this will allow us we're able to solo most of the content until level 50 and we are also having the option to tune into pvp if it's for example in an event somewhere if we are looking at damage we are looking for traits like this one like critical hit heavy attack chance and um, skill damage boost those are really good and um, another thing that's good for scaling the damage besides our weapon is actually traits like we have on the gloves and on the ring here where we are getting attack speed so here we're getting 4.9 percent attack speed here we are getting six percent attack speed from the trade so this is really strong regarding the weapon masteries in the leveling process like leveling up weapons takes a really long time and um, what you're looking for is stuff like um, offhand weapon activation rate to get that additional hit and attack speed so for the for the crossbow while leveling i would put all the points into chain fire and for the dagger while leveling i would put all the points into assassination to also get like a tech speed and offhand weapon activation rate so now let's talk a bit about the rotation when you are in the early game you will use inject venom you will use mortal mark follow that up with quick fire multi shot and then the monster in the early game should have enough poison stacks so it just dies. As you are leveling, you will unlock new uh, new skills like Brutal Incision at 11, um, Battle Strike and um, like the self buffs right here, Thorn, Gale, Wind Snatcher, Selfless Diffusion. So once you have the first one and you are unlocking those, you will then continue your rotation. So Inject Venom, Mortal Mark, quick fire multi-shot then the next monster 
you will then engage with Shadow Strike into Ankle Strike, Brutal Incision, and then usually you can um, already walk off the monster and either finish it with Quick Fire if it's already up, or start buffing yourself with Thorn Gale and um, Selfless Diffusion. Then you are able to apply the weakening again on the monster either with Mortal Mark or Multishot to use Wind Snatcher to get more attack speed and then you're following up with your standard comp. And if you are in that state, you will just have a rotation going with your cooldown. Um, also important to note is that your block skill is giving you mana regen. So whenever you have the option to block, I would highly recommend that you're actually doing so, even if it's like not necessary and you would survive it, do it just for your mana. Another thing that is important is the Nimble Leap. The Nimble Leap is basically your little mobility skill that you are using to proc the passives. Like for example, Shadow Walker, that is giving you a lot more survivability, but also it's procking Trust Power, where we're getting more damage going. So whenever you are like going from one monster to another, as soon as you realize, okay, if I Nimble Leap now, I will be in perfect range to start a fight with the monster. This is when you want to Nimble Leap, because Nimble Leaf also gives you 20% increased attack speed and increases your kill speed and is procking your passive. So it's really strong and it's not just a mobility move. It's actually giving you really nice damage. Another thing that some people are sleeping on sometimes is that in the leveling process, you will have many tasks that will have you collect something. And there are sometimes many aggros around and it's annoying to collect there because they are attacking you and you don't want to spend the time on killing those because the experience is majority is giving from quests and not from killing monsters. So the camouflage cloak is actually, even though it's probably mostly used in PvP, it's really nice for PvE to complete certain quests faster. If you are later in a dungeon, for example, then I would remove camouflage cloak because there it's not useful and you can take another damage spell like for example recoil shot here. Uh, and one last tip is if you are playing the expo day or actually any class it is really important to have the correct settings. Because for example like your standard combo inject venom, mortal mark, quick fire, multi shot it should be somewhere where you can roll your hands so like one two three four and all of that. If you don't know how to properly set up the settings in Throne of Liberty, I would highly recommend my best settings guide. Throne of Liberty is one of the games with the worst default settings I've ever seen. And this guide will show you in detail, all go over all the different tabs and there's lots of them on how to set it up perfectly so you get the most out of your settings and don't have all those unnecessary devs that are tied to having bad settings. Cheers guys.